faith and rationality are two ideologies that exist in varying degrees of conflict or compatibility. Rationality is based on reason or facts. Faith is belief in inspiration, revelation, or authority. The word faith sometimes refers to a belief that is held with lack of reason or evidence, a belief that is held in spite of or against reason or evidence, or it can refer to belief based upon a degree of evidential warrant. Although the words faith and belief are sometimes erroneously conflated and used as synonyms, faith properly refers to a particular type or subset of belief, as defined above. Broadly speaking, there are two categories of views regarding the relationship between faith and rationality. Rationalism holds that truth should be determined by reason and factual analysis, rather than faith, dogma, tradition or religious teaching. Fideism holds that faith is necessary, and that beliefs may be held without any evidence or reason and even in conflict with evidence and reason. The Catholic Church also has taught that true faith and correct reason can and must work together, and, viewed properly, can never be in conflict with one another, as both have their origin in God, as stated in the papal encyclical letter issued by Pope John Paul II, Fides et Ratio on faith and reason topic <inaudible> relationship between faith and reason from at least the days of the greek philosophers the relationship between faith and reason has been hotly debated plato argued that knowledge is simply memory of the eternal Aristotle set down rules by which knowledge could be discovered by reason. Rationalists point out that many people hold irrational beliefs, for many reasons. There may be evolutionary causes for irrational beliefs. Irrational beliefs may increase our ability to survive and reproduce. Or, according to Pascal's wager, it may be to our advantage to have faith, because faith may promise infinite rewards, while the rewards of reason are seen by many as finite. One more reason for irrational beliefs can perhaps be explained by operant conditioning. For example, in one study by B. F. Skinner in 1948, pigeons were awarded grain at regular time intervals regardless of their behavior. The result was that each of pigeons developed their own idiosyncratic response which had become associated with the consequence of receiving grain. Believers in faith—for example those who believe salvation is possible through faith alone—frequently suggest that everyone holds beliefs arrived at by faith, not reason. The belief that the universe is a sensible place and that our minds allow us to arrive at correct conclusions about it, is a belief we hold through faith. Rationalists contend that this is arrived at because they have observed the world being consistent and sensible, not because they have faith that it is. Beliefs held by faith may be seen existing in a number of relationships to rationality. Faith is underlying rationality, in this view, all human knowledge and reason is seen as dependent on faith, faith in our senses, faith in our reason, faith in our memories, and faith in the accounts of events we receive from others. Accordingly, faith is seen as essential to and inseparable from rationality. According to René Descartes, rationality is built first upon the realization of the absolute truth. I think therefore I am, which requires no faith. All other rationalizations are built outward from this realization, and are subject to falsification at any time with the arrival of new evidence. Faith is addressing issues beyond the scope of rationality. In this view, faith is seen as covering issues that science and rationality are inherently incapable of addressing, but that are nevertheless entirely real. Accordingly, faith is seen as complementing rationality, by providing answers to questions that would otherwise be unanswerable. 
faith as contradicting rationality. In this view, faith is seen as those views that one holds despite evidence and reason to the contrary. Accordingly, faith is seen as pernicious with respect to rationality, as it interferes with our ability to think, and inversely rationality is seen as the enemy of faith by interfering with our beliefs. Faith and reason as essential together, this is the Catholic view that faith without reason leads to superstition, while reason without faith leads to nihilism and relativism. Faith is based on warrant, in this view some degree of evidence provides warrant for faith. To explain great things by small. Topic. Views of the Roman Catholic Church Saint Thomas Aquinas, the most important doctor of the Catholic Church, was the first to write a full treatment of the relationship, differences, and similarities between faith—an intellectual assent and reason, predominantly in his Summa Theologica, De Veritate, and Summa Contra Gentiles, the Council of Trent's Catechism, the Roman Catechism, written during the Catholic Church's Counter-Reformation to combat Protestantism and Martin Luther's anti-metaphysical tendencies, Dei Filius was a dogmatic constitution of the First Vatican Council on the Roman Catholic Faith. It was adopted unanimously on 24 April 1870 and was influenced by the philosophical conceptions of Johann Baptist Franzelin, who had written a great deal on the topic of faith and rationality, because the Roman Catholic Church does not disparage reason, but rather affirms its veracity and utility, there have been many Catholic scientists over the ages. 20th-century Thomas philosopher Étienne Gilson wrote about faith and reason in his 1922 book Le Thomisme. His contemporary Jacques Maritain wrote about it in his The Degrees of Knowledge, Fides et Ratio as an encyclical promulgated by Pope John Paul II on 14 September 1998. It deals with the relationship between faith and reason. Pope Benedict XVI the 12th of September 2006 Regensburg lecture was about faith and reason. Topic: <laughs> Lutheran epistemology. Some have asserted that Martin Luther taught that faith and reason were antithetical in the sense that questions of faith could not be illuminated by reason. Contemporary Lutheran scholarship however has found a different reality in Luther. Luther rather seeks to separate faith and reason in order to honor the separate spheres of knowledge that each understand. Bernhard Loos for example has demonstrated in his classic work, Fides und Ratio, that Luther ultimately sought to put the two together. More recently Hans-Peter Grohens has demonstrated that Luther's work on biblical criticism stresses the need for external coherence in right exegetical method. This means that for Luther it is more important that the Bible be reasonable according to the reality outside of the scriptures than that the Bible make sense to itself, that it has internal coherence. The right tool for understanding the world outside of the Bible for Luther is none other than reason which for Luther denoted science, philosophy, history and empirical observation. Here a differing picture is presented of a Luther who deeply valued both faith and reason, and held them in dialectical partnership. Luther's concern thus in separating them is honoring their different epistemological spheres. Topic. Reformed epistemology Topic. Faith as underlying rationality The view that faith underlies all rationality holds that rationality is dependent on faith for its coherence. 
Under this view, there is no way to comprehensively prove that we are actually seeing what we appear to be seeing, that what we remember actually happened, or that the laws of logic and mathematics are actually real. Instead, all beliefs depend for their coherence on faith in our senses, memory, and reason, because the foundations of rationalism cannot be proven by evidence or reason. Rationally, you cannot prove anything you see as real, but you can prove that you yourself are real, and rationalist belief would be that you can believe that the world is consistent until something demonstrates inconsistency. This differs from faith-based belief, where you believe that your world view is consistent no matter what inconsistencies the world has with your beliefs. Rationalist point of view In this view, there are many beliefs that are held by faith alone, that rational thought would force the mind to reject. As an example, many people believe in the biblical story of Noah's flood, that the entire earth was covered by water for 40 days but objected that most plants cannot survive being covered by water for that length of time, a boat of that magnitude could not have been built by wood, and there would be no way for two of every animal to survive on that ship and migrate back to their place of origin, such as penguins, although Christian apologists offer answers to these and such issues, under the premise that such responses are insufficient, then one must choose between accepting the story on faith faith and rejecting reason, or rejecting the story by reason and thus rejecting faith. Within the rationalist point of view, there remains the possibility of multiple rational explanations. For example, considering the biblical story of Noah's flood, one making rational determinations about the probability of the events does so via interpretation of modern evidence. Two observers of the story may provide different plausible explanations for the life of plants, construction of the boat, species living at the time, and migration following the flood. Some see this as meaning that a person is not strictly bound to choose between faith and reason. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Evangelical views. American biblical scholar Archibald Thomas Robertson stated that the Greek word pistis used for faith in the New Testament over 240 times, and rendered assurance in Acts chapter 17 verse 31 KJV, is an old verb to furnish, used regularly by Demosthenes for bringing forward evidence. Likewise Tom Price Oxford Center for Christian Apologetics affirms that when the New Testament talks about faith positively it only uses words derived from the Greek root pistis which means to be persuaded in contrast to faith meaning blind trust, in the absence of evidence, even in the teeth of evidence, Alistair McGrath quotes Oxford Anglican theologian W. H. Griffith Thomas, 1861-1924, who states faith is, "...not blind, but intelligent," and "...commences with the conviction of the mind based on adequate evidence." which McGrath sees as a good and reliable definition, synthesizing the core elements of the characteristic Christian understanding of faith. Alvin Plantinga upholds that faith may be the result of evidence testifying to the reliability of the source of truth claims, but although it may involve this, he sees faith as being the result of hearing the truth of the gospel with the internal persuasion by the Holy Spirit moving and enabling him to believe. Christian belief is produced in the believer by the internal instigation of the Holy Spirit, endorsing the teachings of Scripture, which is itself divinely inspired by the Holy Spirit. The result of the work of the Holy Spirit is faith. <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish philosophy 
The 14th century Jewish philosopher Levi ben Gerson tried to reconcile faith and reason. He wrote, The Torah cannot prevent us from considering to be true that which our reason urges us to believe. His contemporary Hasdai ben Abraham Kreskes argued the contrary view, that reason is weak and faith strong, and that only through faith can we discover the fundamental truth that God is love, that through faith alone can we endure the suffering that is the common lot of God's chosen people. <laughs> See also